Hey, what up, guys? Today seems like we'll be talking about uh, mainly um, just the um, clinical uh, correlations of the micturition. Okay, um, clinical correlation of the micturition under the renal physiology. Now, we'll be talking about um, abnormalities of micturition. Now, in the abnormalities of micturition, um, potential examination question. Yeah. All right. Now, first of all, we have the atonic bladder also known as the flaccid bladder, okay? Now, um, this is caused by the destruction of the pelvic nerves to the bladder. There are no straight signals to the spinal cord. Now, um, bladder loses what? Tone and urine accumulate without micturation, all right? But there's overflow incontinence, all right? Your bladder will lose tone and your urine will accumulate, okay? Without micturation and reflex. Um, this is a picture of the atonic bladder. I would like you to be observing this image while I speak. Now, this is due to the destruction of the sensory um, nerve fibers from urine bladder. And uh, examples are from this could be syphilis and tibes dorsalis. Now, this is due to the absence of what? Um, sensory impulses. The detrusor muscle loses what? Tone and becomes what? Flaccid. And there's no contraction of what? Muscle. Okay. Then it is also called um, overflow dribbling and overflow incontinence, all right? And also um, tabetic bladder, okay? Now you could see this uh, bladder unable to empty properly. Um, there's a um, relaxed pelvic floor, okay? Um, so there is increased abdominal pressure. Now you see the um, bladder um over sensitivity from infection okay um overflow stress and urge okay this is the atonic bladder right destruction of pelvic nerves from the bladder all right bladder loses tone and urine accumulates without maturation now next we'll be going to the automatic bladder now this is due to the word damage of the spinal cord above the sacral segment now, there's lots of voluntary control and hyper micturition reflex, okay? There's also um, lots of... Okay, sorry. Um, lots of voluntary control. Loss of voluntary control is due to uh, the absence of inhibition and facilitation of micturition centers, all right? Now, a collection of small amounts of urine will elicit micturition reflex, all right? There's a loss of voluntary control of your bladder. Now, once you have small amounts of um, urine in the bladder, this will elicit micturition reflex, all right? Another image of the um, automatic bladder as we will have here, all right? This after complete transection of the spinal cord above the sacral segment, the urine bladder loses tone and fails to give response to what? Micturition reflex. Now, voluntary control of micturition is lost. Whenever the bladder is filled with small, some amount of urine, there is automatic evacuation of the bladder. As the urine is coming, the urine is passing out. As the urine is coming, it's passing out. That's automatic bladder. There's no control. Then um, what about the uninhibited and um, neurogenic bladder? Now, see that there's frequent and uncontrolled micturition caused by lesion in the midbrain. All right? Uh, this results to continuous excitation of the, the spinal micturition reflex. Okay? Now, Collection of small amounts of urine in the bladder will elicit a micturition reflex. In the uninhibited neurogenic bladder, there's a micturition reflex. While in the automatic bladder, there is no micturition reflex as the urine is coming, it's passing out. Okay? Why in this uninhibited neurogenic, uh, you actually feel urine, but this urine is just in small quantity and not the required quantity for micturition reflex. Okay? So these guys, we are done talking about the three um, abnormalities of micturition, okay? So see you guys in the next tutorial, and bye for now.